Hello, good evening. It's emerged that waiting times at Scotland's accident and emergency departments in the run-up to Christmas reached record levels. The Health Secretary says services have been under exceptional pressure. Opposition parties claim it proves the Scottish Government's failing to run the NHS properly. This report from Andrew Black. At Dundee's Nine Wells Hospital, A&D services have been under serious pressure. We've had to leave a lot of patients, ask them to go home and, and wait with their fractures, their broken ankles, their broken wrists. Uh, and then we normally get back to within a day or two and sometimes people have been home for three or four days or longer. Scottish Government targets say 95% of A&D patients should be seen within four hours. In the week ending December the 17th, the actual figure across Scotland was 81.1%, the lowest since weekly figures began in 2015. At NHS Lothian, one of Scotland's biggest health authorities, the figure was 68.7%. The Conservatives say the Scottish Government must do more. We need to look at the primary care investment. We need to stop people from going to their local a &E department as a first port of call. And by supporting GPs and looking at the GP crisis that we face, this inevitably will help the NHS. Thank you. Thank you. But the Health Secretary said recent NHS pressures had been huge. So unprecedented levels of orthopaedic trauma, on top of that, flu-like illnesses then impacting straight away on the back of that. So, you know, we prepare for winter, but when you have pressures like this, it does overwhelm the system. Scottish ministers also say that help's now being given to get services back to normal. Andrew Black, reporting Scotland. Police are investigating the deaths of a man and a woman after their bodies were found in a village in the borders on Boxing Day. The woman, who was in her 40s, and a man in his 50s, were discovered in a property near Kelso yesterday afternoon. Detectives from Police Scotland's major investigations team say they're working to establish the full circumstances of their deaths, which they're treating as unexplained. Up to 200 jobs could go at the energy company Scottish Power as part of a voluntary redundancy programme. The company employs around 6,500 people in the UK, more than half of whom are based in Scotland. Scottish Power says the voluntary scheme will be open across all of its UK businesses and reflects recent efficiency schemes across the company. Firefighters helped 10 people out of a block of flats in Glasgow after a blaze broke out early this morning. The alarm at the building on Craig Miller Road in the Mount Florida area of the city went off just after 2 o'clock. A property in the first floor had gone up in flames, forcing the evacuation of neighbouring flats. 35 firefighters tackled the blaze. Police say it's not believed to have been suspicious. Oil and gas has begun to flow through a major pipeline which was closed earlier this month after a crack was discovered. Operator Ineos says it's allowing a limited flow through the pipe while it tests the system. It's expected to be fully operational early in the new year. A rare marine feature wrecked by a dredging boat has been identified as the biggest known reef of its kind. Emergency measures to protect the flame shell reef in Loch Carron are now likely to be made permanent. Our environment correspondent Kevin Keane has this report. This was the devastation caused when a dredger dragged its gear through a rare flame shell reef in Loch Carron. Hundreds of disturbed and broken shells litter the floor. Divers have now found that this reef is the biggest of its kind in the world. It goes pretty much spans the seabed uh, of the 5.5 kilometer uh, tide swept channel uh, and we believe it covers an area of about 194 hectares or two square kilometers. This is what the reef should look like, a carpeted seabed below which the flame shells live and an important nursery ground for scallops and other species. There's been some industry resistance to banning fishing through marine protected areas or MPAs at too many sensitive sites. But ministers say for Loch Carron, it's the right thing. The measures that get put in place for MPAs, we put in place um, in consultation with the fishermen to, to make sure that they're reasonable and appropriate. Flame shells are uh, highly sensitive to damaging fishing activities, uh, uh, scallop dredging, prawn trawling. Um, and it just does not make sense to tow across these fragile habitats. Ministers will now seek to ban fishing on Loch Carron permanently, but it may take many decades for the damaged part of the reef to recover. Kevin Keane reporting Scotland. 
Football and the Edinburgh Derby is one of five matches in the Premiership this evening. Hearts, who are fifth in the league, are at home to Hibs, who are one place above them. Our sports reporter Brian McLaughlin is at Tynecastle to preview the big game for us. This fixture has in the past thrown up some incredible score lines back in the 1st of January 1973. Hibernian came here and left with a 7-0 victory over their city rivals. And 14 years ago, the team shared eight goals. Four each was the final score. Four of the goals were scored in the last six minutes of the game. Hibernian have had the upper hand in recent meetings. They're unbeaten in their last eight matches against Hearts, although Hearts at the moment are arguably the team in form in the Scottish Premier League. They're unbeaten in their last seven and have only lost two goals in their last seven games. Now, there's not a seat to be had inside here. The tickets were sold weeks ago for both sides. Both sets of fans will be wanting the bragging rights for the festive period. Who will win? Well, you'll have to tune in to BBC Radio Scotland to find out. The match kicks off at 7.45. Brian McLaughlin reporting Scotland at a very cold Tynecastle Park. Well, let's see if that cold snap is set to continue. Christopher's at the map for us. It is. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Hello there. It was a cold, crisp day for many of us today. Showers in the north and little change really overnight tonight. Those showers still coming in on those north-northwesterly winds. Winter at times, some snow to lower levels. For most of central and southern Scotland, dry, clear and cold. Even in towns and cities, zero or lower. In the countryside, where there's snow on the ground in the south, minus nine or minus ten. So a cold, frosty start to the day tomorrow. Risk of ice, especially where we've had the showers, which at times will come all the way down the west coast. But for most of us tomorrow, another dry, bright, sunny day. It will be chilly, mind, despite that sunshine. Mid-afternoon temperatures, two or three Celsius at best for many. And if you have snow on the ground where you are, well, perhaps struggling to reach these values. Further north, still a number of showers coming in two parts of northern Aberdeenshire, Murray, the far north and the northern Isles. And again, they will be wintry and still quite windy for Orkney and Shetland. A bitter feel here with those strong northerlies. Then a very cold night tomorrow night, colder than this coming night, with a brief ridge of high pressure. And then a system arriving off the Atlantic as it bumps into that cold air, turning readily to snow. So first thing Friday morning across southern parts of Scotland, there will be some snow, even to low levels. A Met Office yellow be aware warning in force and something to bear in mind, especially if you're travelling and on those higher road routes, several centimetres of snow. Through the central belt, a mixture of rain, sleet and snow. North of here, dry and cold for all. That's the forecast for now. Well, at least it's festive weather. Thanks for that, Chris. That's all for now. We're back with Lake Bulletin at 10.20 tonight. Until then, have a good night. Bye bye.